Well, one last time here with Coach Desco, Brian Higgins along. And, uh, Coach, uh, we've talked many, many times over the years here. Now 46 years you've been at Syracuse as a player and an assistant, and now uh, the last 23 as the head coach uh, before announcing your retirement this week. What hits you on a day like this? I, I know after 46 years, uh, th there's got to be a lot that runs through your mind. You know, well, walking through the lobby in, in this building and in my office and uh, brings back a lot of memories. And I've heard from so many people, uh, whether it be friends, fellow coaches, uh, alumni, uh, so many past players, and uh, all of a sudden you realize uh, how many uh, relationships you've had over the years with, uh, you know, with players and, and uh, faculty and so on. And hear from so many people. Um, I haven't been able to get back to everybody yet, and it's, uh, I, I'm trying to and I'm going to. Um, but just to hear from so many people brings up uh, uh, a lot of memories. Well, so you have the time now to get, to get back yeah. to people here. And uh, when it comes to, to this, why, why now, I guess, would be the question. And now that you've come to the decision, do you feel comfortable with it? Yeah, well, I've had some time after the season uh, to think about that. I've had a lot of conversations with John Wildhack and uh, with a lot of different scenarios with him. He's been very helpful in this process. And uh, great question, because I, I think when decided to do that, um, I wasn't sure, but now every day that goes by uh, is, is easier. And, you know, the time coaching takes is absolutely in incredible. Uh, so during the season, it's, it's seven days a week. Uh, I talk to my friends who are golfing and, uh, and have their weekends off. Uh, and then now, in summertime, uh, you're out on the, rec on the recruiting paths. And uh, you know you're sitting out in the field at, at uh, 95 degrees and uh, terrible humidity, uh, and I'm gonna miss it. It's fun, uh, but the, the time that I've had to be home uh, with my wife Cindy and the family, I'm starting to enjoy it more and more every day. Well, certainly, they and uh, your four kids have been with you here through this uh, this whole thing, but. You're a Central New York lifer. I mean, you've been here from start to finish. You're not going anywhere. When, when you go back to the beginning, when you get recruited here by Roy Simmons Jr. and play here, did you envision a career in this at that point? Or was that something that crossed your mind? Not at all. Uh, you know, I, I had looked at a number of other schools, and then when Roy Jr. called, I, I toured Syracuse, and I, I just had this feeling going through campus that it was like, wow, I lived in the area. Uh, and as we recruit Central New York guys, I, I, it brings back my own memories of uh, showing up on campus. And you know, at the time, I'd think of Archibald Stadium or the Carrier Dome, or, or not the Carrier Dome, wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, Coin Field is where lacrosse played. So then to walk through campus and see everything else that uh, the university had to offer uh, academically also, it, 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 I just decided to come to Syracuse. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting in a building here that did not exist then, coins uh, over our shoulders uh, that way. And, and then you graduate, Roy offers you a job. Back then, lacrosse assistant coach was not exactly the most lucrative position uh, out there. Could you have a vision to taking that job that it would lead you to where you are right now? Well, you know, I, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I still needed a few credits to graduate. Uh, so there was incentive there to stay you know, at the university and, and finish my degree. Uh, and I thought, what an amazing opportunity because um, you know, Jay Gallagher, the assistant coach, had, had left then. Uh, he had a big uh, impact on my life along with Roy. And to be able to stay and, and participate in the sport that I loved at the university where I played, um, it, it just was a great opportunity at the time. And then uh, as it went on and we won our first national championship four years later and the position got better uh, as far as financially got better. Uh, yeah, there wasn't much here then. And uh, I remember doing many other things, waiting on tables, tending bar, painting houses in the summertime uh, so I could coach. And uh, to have it see where it was and see where it is today has just been amazing. What changed it? Was it 83 that, that got it all going when you guys won the first title? What, what do you think kick-started what, what this all became? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think it kind of started my junior, senior year in playing in college. Uh, where things were starting to get better. Roy was uh, doing a, uh, an amazing job with what he had to work with. And then staying on and the, the success of the program kind of going up and up and up and then to win the championship, I think it, uh, uh, it, things started to kick in. I, I'll never forget uh, Roy talking with Jake Crownhamel, who uh, uh, I thank him for my first opportunity here at Syracuse along with, with Junior. Um, he knew it was coming. We win the championship game, and Roy went in to say, hey, this is becoming uh, uh, harder and harder. We're getting better and better. We need more support. And, and Jake, you know, as he did back in the day, he would, he would be like this, and he would say, uh, 
Uh, Roy, don't come in here asking for more because you're doing better than what you should with what you have. <laughs> that was a famous quote from Jake. So, um, but it, no, he he did step up and, and every year more and more got put into the lacrosse program here at Syracuse. And we certainly know over the years the relationship that you and Roy had, which to fast forward to 1998 when Roy was in the same position that you were and he decides uh, to retire and this gets turned over to you. I don't think people say in coaching anything is harder than taking over for a legendary head coach, which is exactly what Roy was. And the program kept right on going. How tough was that to be in those shoes to take over for him? Well, um, I didn't understand all that. Uh, and again, and being part of the program as a player and then as a coach and, and having that success, uh, enjoying Roy's junior's success and me being an assistant coach, um, I, I just it seemed pretty seamless to me. Uh, I think the biggest thing was, uh, you know, as an assistant coach, you, you pretty much just have a whistle around your neck and you're doing coaches and X's and O's. And then seeing the uh, adjustment from being head coach and all the other stuff you had to deal with, where I just wanted to coach. And, uh, you know, I had to deal with uh, uh, budgets and uh, parents and the university. And if anything went wrong, you had to you had to step up the plate and try to help take care of it. So it was a, a, a different experience, but a good experience. and. Um, it's, it's, it's just been wonderful. I mean, you had to deal with this part of it too. I mean, you had to deal with the, talking to people, putting yourself out there. H how tough was that part? To be, you're, you're, you now as John Desco in 1999 were on the stage. Yeah, that, that, that piece was uh, very interesting to me. And I never, liked, uh, I never liked public speaking. That was not my forte. Um, but uh, I think you just do it as a result of uh, you have to answer questions. Fortunately, uh, anything being asked of me was something I knew a lot about. So kind of easy to answer questions when they're talking about lacrosse or X's and O's or Syracuse University. I say for me personally, thinking about your style of coaching, it always exuded a calmness to me in the close, the close moments uh, on the sideline. I, I always think of the picture at the end of the 09 title game. I, I think it was right when Matt Abbott found Kenny Nims to send it to overtime. You have a big smile on your face with the arm in the air and you can see around you is pandemonium <laughs> and you're the one moment of calm uh, on the sideline. As far as your style and that leading to your success, uh, how important was that to you? Uh, I think it was important. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, the guys, uh, you know, grabbing face masks and kicking people in the pants doesn't, doesn't apply anymore. Um, and I, you know, you want your team in tight situations, whether it be uh, the fourth quarter or overtime. Uh, you want your team to be calm and, and thinking about what they're going to do when they go on the field. And uh, I think a lot of coaches, you get very emotional. And you, you, it takes you a, a couple seconds to uh, regather and come up with a, a plan, whether it be offensive or defensively, depending on the point of the game that you're in. So I'd like to think it, it's been beneficial and it, it helps. Uh, it's helped us win games. Obviously, that game stands out as uh, you talk about a career highlight or a Syracuse fan highlight. For you, do you have a in-game highlight or highlights that you run through or is that not the way you think back on things? You know uh, a lot of people ask me those questions and uh, you know I've, uh, you know I go back and thought about moments and um, you know I think in 1983 when we were in the first national championship that's obviously a special one um, you know there are other games too that are important and I think that uh, uh, you know, in 09, the way we came back and won that game, too, that, that's a very special moment. Off the top of my head, those are two that kind of really stick out to me. Well, it's the first one and the last one, so they're yeah. two good ones to, to have in uh, your head, and obviously two of the most uh, dramatic uh, national championship games of all time. Uh, Coach, we, we said it's 46 years. That's a long time to do yeah. anything anywhere for anybody. <laughs> what, what, what's the biggest thing you've noticed that has changed be it in college athletics or, or the sport or something, what, what stands out to you above all of how different it is now than, than it was then? You mean of all sports and all? Well, just how, however it affects you. Um, you know, that's a good question. I, uh, there haven't, you know, in men's lacrosse, there, there haven't been too many rule changes. I think probably uh, the shot clock is a, is a big one. Uh, you know, I think it's changed uh, how coaches coach the game a little bit and there's no more of that stalling the ball for two and three four minutes at a time uh, so I think that's probably been the, the most effective uh, and we'll see going forward I think that the face-off needs to be looked at closely 
hey, we'll see where it goes. It's been uh, slowly evolving, right, hasn't it, over the last uh, four decades yeah. or, or so. And, uh, Coach, uh, we, we look going forward. I know you care deeply about this program, and even though you will not be in charge of it anymore, I'm sure you want to see its success. How, how important is that to you as this transition to, to Gary Gate and everything uh, moves forward? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, it's great to see Gary at the helm. Obviously, he recruited Gary, and he played for uh, me and uh, Roy Jr., and then we've we've – actually turned into I think pretty good friends over the years and my wife uh, Cindy and his wife Nicole uh, talk all the time so it's uh, uh, it's gonna be important I'm not gonna try to step on any toes but I want to be supportive whether it uh, uh, you know whether it be in recruiting uh, whether it be X's and O's whether it be just information or support maybe fundraising with alumni um, so I want to uh, be here and I want to see this uh, program win national championships again I'd say, Coach, I can't say I've gone through the numbers of every coach in every sport in history, but there can't be anybody in, in college athletics, when you look at the sheer numbers of what you've done, that when you have 529 wins, when you look at every level you've been at, which is closing on 60% of the all-time wins in a century-plus history of the program. Huh. What hits you when you hear about that? I mean, you've been around long enough that you've been involved in that much of the history of the program that you have been the constant over that time. Yeah, well, you know, believe it or not, I, I've never really paid attention to those numbers. It's not like I uh, sit in the office at the end of the year and try to do the math and, and figure out those things. So to, to hear someone say it out loud, it's almost like, whoa, I mean, I didn't realize that. I'm not talking about somebody else. Um, so to hear those numbers it makes me very appreciative uh, of my time here at Syracuse, and um, I look forward to con contributing more. Do you think the fact, because some people would think about those numbers, do you think that not thinking about them is, is maybe a reason you did have the success you did? That's a good point. Um, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hope so. It, uh, um, again, to hear them is, is, is uh, a little bit of the wow factor there, kind of me on the outside looking in. Um, but again, appreciative. And yeah, I, I know that maybe if you do look at those numbers and maybe it affects how you think or what you do or puts additional pressure on yourself, um, and I haven't done that to myself. All right, lastly, we'll, we'll wrap up on this, uh, Coach, uh, as you head off to retirement. What, what is next for you? Are you sitting, sitting by the lake, or uh, what, what other plans do you have going forward? That's a great question. You know, probably from here, I'm going to go back to the office, and I've got to go to Home Depot because I've got some projects that uh, have, uh, have been lingering. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to spend some serious time at the lake. Uh, try to enjoy that, uh, you know, as we've talked about, you know, working uh, on the weekends and working a lot throughout the summer recruiting uh, to be able to spend time with the family and, and, and enjoy that uh, piece of heaven. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I probably got to go to Home Depot, too, so we should <laughs> wrap it up. We'll leave it on that, Coach. It's been a pleasure working with you all these years, and congratulations on your retirement. Right. It has been great working together, and uh, thanks for all your help over the years, and hopefully we'll do this a couple more times before it's all over. That's it. You're not going anywhere, right? That's right. <laughs>